Contemplations on Siddhartha from the book by Herman Hess Narrated by M. Lynn Johnson These quotes are from the book. Please listen and contemplate. Wisdom cannot be imparted. Wisdom that a wise man attempts to impart always sounds like foolishness to someone else. Knowledge can be communicated, but not wisdom. One can find it, live it, do wonders through it, but one cannot communicate and teach it. When someone seeks, said Siddhartha, then it easily happens that his eyes see only the thing that he seeks, and he is able to find nothing, to take in nothing, because he always thinks only about the thing he is seeking. What could I say to you that would be of value, except that perhaps you seek too much, that as a result of your seeking, you cannot find? It may be important to great thinkers to examine the world, to explain and despise it, but I think it is only important to love the world, not to despise it, not for us to hate each other, but to be able to regard the world and ourselves and all beings with love, admiration, and respect. Words do not express the thoughts very well. They always become a little different immediately after they are expressed, a little distorted, a little foolish. And yet it also pleases me and seems right that what is of value and wisdom to one man seems nonsense to another. Your soul is the whole world. Dreams and restless thoughts came flowing to him from the river, from the twinkling stars at night, from the sun's melting rays. Dreams and a restlessness of the soul came to him. He lost his self a thousand times, and for days on end, he dwelt in non-being. But although the paths took him away from self, in the end, they always led back to it. Siddhartha has one single goal, to become empty to become empty of thirst, desire, dreams, pleasure, and sorrow, to let the self die, no longer to be self, to experience the peace of an emptied heart, to experience pure thought. That was his goal. I have always thirsted for knowledge, I have always been full of questions.
although Siddhartha fled from the self a thousand times, dwelt in nothing, dwelt in animal and stone, the return was inevitable. The hour was inevitable when he would again find himself in sunshine or in moonlight, in shadow or in rain, and was again self and Siddhartha, again felt the torment of the onerous life cycle. The reason why I do not know anything about myself the reason why Siddhartha has remained alien and unknown to myself is due to one thing, to one single thing. I was afraid of myself. I was fleeing from myself. I was seeking Atman, I was seeking Brahman. I was determined to dismember myself and tear away its layers of husk in order to find in its unknown innermost recess the kernel at the heart of those layers, the Atman, life, the divine principle, the ultimate. But in doing so, I was losing myself. And here is a doctrine at which you will laugh. It seems to me, Govinda, that love is the most important thing in the world. He was taught by the river. Incessantly he learned from it. Most of all, he learned from it to listen, to play close attention with a quiet heart, with a waiting open soul, without passion, without a wish, without judgment, without an opinion. I called the world of phenomena an illusion. I called my eyes and my tongue an accident, a valueless phenomena. Now that it is all over, I have awakened. I have really awakened. And I have just been born today. <laughs>